Hello, my friends. Welcome back. We are going to keep reading Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I'm sorry if you can hear some noise in the background. I think there are people working outside, but we're just going to power through. The last time that we read, Ella had finally found Lucinda. Lucinda spotted her and was like, why are you staring at me? So we are going to figure out what happens next. Chapter 18. She's probably another supplicant, Cyril said. Come to beg you to take away a gift you gave her at birth. Don't turn this one into a squirrel. I can't bear to watch it. Claudia grasped Lucinda's wrist. You can't know squirrels lead charming, contented lives. I'm sure she prefers to be a human maiden. A squirrel? I had to keep her from making a squirrel of me. Abense eke ubasu inwaxi akiria, I said, wondering if she spoke Eorthian. I had just told her I didn't understand Kyrian. Lucinda's expression softened. I'm sorry, my sweet, she answered in Eorthian. I asked you why you were staring at me. You're so beautiful. Let her think me simple. What a darling child. What's your name, dear? L. This was Ella in Eorthian. Beauty isn't important, L. Only what's in your heart is important. Do you understand that? Yes, I'm sorry I stared. No need to be sorry, sweet child. You did nothing wrong. Her smile was dazzling. Thank you, lady, I curtsied. Oh, and Sprout has come to listen. You may call me Lucinda, she lifted her chin. They would not have me say so, she indicated Cyril and Claudia, but I am a fairy. A fairy? That's why you're so beautiful. My friends are shopkeepers, Cyril said firmly, also in Eorthian. We sell shoes. For tiny feet, Lucinda laughed. For children, Claudia amended. Oh, I said, I don't need shoes, but I need help, magical help. Can you help me, Lady Lucinda? You don't need her help, Claudia said. You should leave her while you still may. I'd be delighted to help you. You see, Claudia, they do need us. Tell me, Elle. I want more metal, if you please, lady. Whatever anyone tells me to do, I do, whether I want to or not. I've always been this way, but I wish I weren't. The maiden is naturally obedient, Cyril said. Isn't that one of your gifts? And she doesn't like it. I knew how sweet you were the moment I saw you. Obedience is a marvelous gift, Elle. Sometimes I give that gift to little babies. I certainly won't take it away from you. Be happy to be blessed with such a lovely quality. But I began, then stopped as Lucinda's order gripped me. My mood changed and I smiled joyously. The curse had been turned into a blessing. Thank you, lady, thank you, I said, almost forgetting to speak Eorthian. I kissed her hand. There, there, you don't have to thank me. You only need to see it in the proper light. She patted my head. Now run along, Elle. My first order in my new state. I was delighted to obey. I rushed off. I knew I was happy only because I'd been ordered to be, but the happiness was absolute. I still understood why I had always hated Lucinda's gift, but I was glad nonetheless. I imagined future commands, awful ones, ones that would kill me, and I glowed at the idea of obeying them. For the first time since mother had died, I was free of fear. I would, I would embrace whatever happened. I felt as light as a cloud. I decided to find father. If anyone would have co commands for me, he would. I found him outside Oaxi's house, climbing into his carriage. He turned when he heard my voice, and I received a shock. He was actually pleased to see me. I had never before seen him smile without guile. Ella, my dear. I didn't care if he was angry. I ran away from finishing school. He laughed. I knew the lass had courage. And are you a lady now, or still a clumsy cook's helper? How shall I show you? Curtsy for me. I swept him at my finest. Excellent. All his cunning returned. You're pretty enough. Foolish of me never to have thought of you. Get into the carriage, Eleanor. I trust you will not damage your gown this time. Shouldn't we say goodbye to Uaxi? I asked, climbing in. She won't miss us. She's too heart sore over a gift from a fairy. He frowned. They say three were here, and I never saw a hair of them. The carriage began to move. I didn't care where we were headed. You are just in time to put your training to use, Father said. Only tell me what I must do. His eyebrows rose. This is more transformation than I had hoped for. He was silent for a long while. I began to feel drowsy. I am a ruined man. His voice startled me. What? I sold an estate that didn't belong to me. The gnomes who bought it have found me out. When we reach Frell, I shall have to repay them and it will take all I own. I shall have to sell our manor, our furniture, the carriage, and I shall have to sell you in a manner of speaking. You must marry so we can be rich again. So that he could be rich again. Yes, father, gladly, when? I understood the monstrousness of his plan, but nothing could lessen my joy at the prospect of obeying. What did you say? I said, yes, father, gladly, when? You ask when, not to whom? You are so anxious to wed? No, father, only to do your bidding. What did they do to you at that finishing school? No wonder you ran off. When we reached our manor, father stayed outside to speak to the coachman, while I hurried inside to find Mandy. 
She was scrubbing vegetables and a parrot perched on her shoulder. She hugged me so tight I could barely breathe. Ella, Ella, my sweet. The parrot squawked in gnomic. Cock, co, echod, does rock, chalk. I wish she'd never stop squeezing me. I wished I could spend the rest of my life as a child being slightly crushed by someone who loved me. Father spoke from the doorway. I shall be away from home this evening. However, tomorrow we shall entertain. Elvish mushrooms will arrive from the market. They're a delicacy, Mandy. Serve them as a first course for Lady Eleanor and her guest. What guest? Mandy asked after father left. My husband, perhaps. I'm so glad, Mandy. She dropped the pot she had been washing. It fell into the wash tub, but rose back into her hands a moment later. Your what? The parrot squawked again. Chalk? Mandy had named him Chalk after his favorite word, which was an exclamation in gnomic, meaning oh, or oh my, or even eek. In this case, I'm sure it meant eek. My husband, father has lost all his money. I must marry so he can be rich again. This tops all, she stormed. What is he thinking about marrying off a chick like you? And why are you glad about it? Not just glad, I'm, I couldn't find the right word, ecstatic to do it. If it will please them both, my father and my new husband. Mandy cupped my chin in her hand and examined my face. What has happened to you, child? I met Lucinda, and she made me happy to be obedient. No, baby. No, honey, Mandy blanched. She didn't. It's much better this way. I don't feel cursed anymore. Don't be sad, I smiled. See, I'm giving you an order. If you obeyed it, you'd be happy too. She turned you from half puppet to all puppet. I'm supposed to be glad about that? I didn't answer. While Mandy stood dumbstruck, I looked around the kitchen, greeting every familiar object. Finally, she muttered, Lucinda's up to new tricks. Then she spoke to me. I'm starved. Are you ready for dinner, Lev? We supped together in the kitchen, only the two of us and the parrot, because father had dismissed the other servants. He must like my cooking too much to get rid of me, Mandy told me, over cold chicken wings and warm bread. She spoke no more of my new obedience, but it must have been on her mind, because she, cha she changed toward me. She stopped being bossy. I suppose she wouldn't give Lucinda the satisfaction of using my new state. However, Lucinda wouldn't have known, and I was denied the joy of obeying. The next afternoon, we prepared the broth for a fish stew with wild onions, dinner for my guest. I was slicing the onions when a boy brought the mushrooms father had promised. Their carton bore the label Torlin Karu. Karu meant mushrooms, but I didn't know the meaning of Torlin. Examining the box, Mandy frowned. Sweet, would you look up that Torlin word for me? Torlin, noun, justice, fairness, I read in my dictionary. Torlin Karu, justice mushrooms, induce feelings of liking and love in those who eat them used in elvish courts of law to settle civil disputes. I'll Torlin Carew him. It doesn't matter, I said. It matters to me, Mandy yanked on her boots and flung her cloak over her shoulders. I'll be back soon. Please keep the broth from coming to grief. I stirred the soup and thought about our dinner guest. I would be glad to marry him, but would I be glad afterward? He might be cruel or dull-witted or mad. Father wouldn't concern himself with my happiness, only with his own. If he were terrible, Mandy could order me to be contented anyway. Or perhaps I could persuade my husband to issue the command. Chalk landed on my shoulder and pecked lightly at my ear. Chalk? Gung gung? Azug? Lovely, an order. I had to kiss him. I turned my head and managed to kiss a wing as he flew to perch on a high shelf. Gung gung? Azug? He swalked again. I approached the shelf and extended my hand. The bird obligingly hopped on. I brought him close to my face, but before I could touch my lips to a feather, he flew away to the top of a window shutter. I ran for the chair so I could climb up to him but as soon as I was high enough, he flew off. When Mandy returned half an hour later, I had a spoon for stirring the broth in one half, one hand, and a strainer for catching chalk in the other, and I was breathless from running from one to the other. The curse must have known I was trying to obey because my complaints hadn't started. I wasn't dizzy or faint or in pain, but I was weeping. Chalk wouldn't let me obey and be happy. Ella, what's a foot? A wing, what's a wing? I corrected, starting to laugh through my tears. Chalk won't let me kiss him. Don't kiss the filthy creature, Mandy ordered, releasing me. Jungung azug? He did it again, I said. Don't kiss him. Pwak ik jungung azug? I told Chalk, hoping he'd adopt my addition. I repeated it. Pwak ik jungung azug? He liked it. Pwak ik jungung azug? Much better. The new version was, don't kiss me. I'd be delighted every time he said it. After we put the kitchen to rights, we began to replace the Torlin Caro with innocent mushrooms. Maybe I should eat the elvish ones. I don't want you hoodwinked, even if you don't care. Father came into the kitchen. How is our dinner faring? He asked genially. Then his face darkened. Why aren't you using my mushrooms, Mandy? She dropped a quick curtsy. I don't know these elvish ones, sir. Maybe they're not fine enough. I didn't want her to be blamed. 
I told her to exchange them when she wasn't sure. I sent you to finishing school so you wouldn't be a cook's helper, Ella. Use the elvish mushrooms, Mandy. And that's the end of chapter 18. So we will see who the dinner guest is and if it is indeed Ella's future husband tomorrow when we read chapter 19. I'll see you guys then.